Coach Garner here from HockeyTraining.com and in this video I want to talk to you about skill-based conditioning. That's right, I want to talk about conditioning your skills out in the ice. This is as hockey specific as it gets. In the world of sports science, in reference to sports specific conditioning, things such as aerobic training, lactic training, alactic training, your circuits, your intervals, all of these things are of uh, a prime importance and especially breaking down the muscle cell and how it generates energy and ATP. All of these things are what people are constantly talking about. But unless those structural changes in your body are married to better skill acquisition out in the ice, you're just gonna become a more fit person and not necessarily a better hockey player. So if you wanna be on the cutting edge of real hockey training, then you have to become familiar with something known as fatigued motor control. Now, fatigue motor control is what it's known as if you look up this type of research within the scientific literature. But for ease of discussion, I like to call it just skill-based conditioning because fatigued motor control represents motor control. So things like your, your coordination, your technical ability, performing in a state of fatigue. How well are you able to execute your edge work, your stick handling, your shooting, your hockey IQ in terms of pattern recognition and reading, uh, reading the ice? How do all of these things operate when you are in a state of extreme fatigue? Because they better be operating well. This is of critical importance to hockey players because we all know what happens to a tired hockey player. They're, they might be too exhausted, so they're gonna throw a suicide pass to someone else. They might be really tired, so they're gonna start looking at their bench to see if they can go off and screw up the entire shift lineup. They might have a breakaway opportunity, but instead they take a shot that has no chance of going in simply because they don't have the gas to do do it properly. If you do not have skill-based conditioning, then during the times when you're tired, which are the most important times on those hard shifts during overtime, maybe late in the third period, when you have a scoring opportunity at the end of your shift, in the most important times, you're going to be tired. So you need to have the technical ability to still be a sharp hockey player even when you're tired. That is absolutely going to separate you from the hockey player who did great conditioning workouts, but no skill-based conditioning. You take two hockey players, A and B, identical levels of cardiovascular and muscular conditioning, but one did skill-based conditioning, he's got the neural advantage. That neural advantage representing in coordination, technical ability, the ability to perform when exhausted is what's gonna keep you patient with the puck. When you're patient with the puck and you can execute your skill, that is performing under pressure in a nutshell. You're gonna be able to freaking crush it. So how do we train your skills? Well, there's two main methods that I like to use with hockey players. First is simply the hit method, high intensity interval training. If you're watching this channel, you're probably familiar with it. High levels of extreme bursts of energy coupled with a rest period in interval fashion to get an anaerobic training stimulus. 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off, a typical formula. What you could do to do skill-based conditioning is 30 seconds on. You are going hard during a dry land exercise, whether it be hill sprints, stair sprints, normal sprints. Uh, Versa climbers are excellent because they're incorporating the upper and the lower body. Whatever you do, you want to go as hard as possible for 30 seconds and ideally get your heart rate up around 170 to match an in-game setting. And then during your 30 seconds rest, that's when you do something else during that recovery period. What do I like to do to initiate skill-based conditioning? Well, for the beginner, I actually like to have them do really light jump rope during their rest period. I know you might be thinking, well, that's not skill-based. There is a lot of neural connection going on for jump rope because it is skill-based. You're forced to be technical when jumping rope because if you're not technical when jumping rope, you're not gonna jump rope well. You're gonna miss a lot, you're gonna hit your shins, the rope's gonna be all over the place. So you're actually at a beginner level training your body to be technical even in a state of fatigue. And then perhaps jump rope was your phase one. 
Phase two, you can move on to stick handling during that 30 second period. So now I'm doing something more hockey specific. I'm narrowing, moving from general physical preparation to specific physical, physical preparation. And I'm doing stick handling during my rest periods so that I'm training my nervous system to be technical even when my physical system is exhausted. And maybe that stick handling is just phase two. Maybe phase three, I do a McDavid crossover shuffle while stick handling. So now I'm doing something even more hockey specific, but also even more technical. And then maybe phase four, I'm doing a McDavid crossover shuffle while receiving passes, um, whether that be uh, passing it to myself off of a rebound or interactive with a partner. And then maybe phase five, it's actually reaction based. So I'm using something like hockey training TV and a buzzer or a light in order to to do skills, but then react to something at the same time. You're narrowing the specificity of the program design and you're doing skill-based conditioning at the highest possible level, technically, physically, and mentally so that you can dominate out in the ice. That was just a five phase progression just off the top of my head that I could give you in order to condition your skills so that you're not just conditioning your body and that'll absolutely separate the good from the great out in the ice. What's another method? Well, there's the workout method. And this is a method that's become very popular now because of the elusive edge work formula that I've created here at hockeytraining.com as part of the off-season hockey training system. The elusive edge work formula is a series of first step quickness, agility, speed, and skating technical drills in that exact order at the beginning of the off season, it's done after the warm up, but before the workout. But then by the time you get to the middle of the off season, it's done right in the middle of your training session. Whether it's a strength day, a hypertrophy day, yeah, whatever it's gonna be, you are doing it right in the middle because I want you to be mentally and physically fatigued by the time you are gonna perform these highly technical and specific skating drills. And then by the end of the off season, you're actually performing the elusive edge work formula after the workout. So when you're at your sorest, your most physically exhausted, you're most mentally exhausted, you're done with the workout. Now you have to perform the elusive edge work formula. So now we're training you to be technical at your absolute greatest level of fatigue. So whether you wanna do skill-based conditioning directly in your conditioning workouts, or if you wanna do skill-based conditioning attached to your resistance training workouts, those are two great methods that you can use so that you're not just training, but your hockey training, all right? If you liked this video and you learned something new, make sure you smash that thumbs up button and subscribe to the brand new Hockey Science Unleashed channel. And give me some more ideas in the comments section about new video ideas you want me to cover so that I can help you become a better hockey player. Let's go.